Salute, salute, Knicks Nation. What a game that we just witnessed. Unfortunately, the New York Knicks lost this one. But Jalen Brunson, a 61-point performance tonight. One for the history books. Let's chop it up with the best chat in the biz as we move on the season 44 and 29. This was a game that was funky from the beginning. The Knicks dug themselves a 20-point hole, right? But the Knicks continue to fight. They continue to claw their way back. And it was Jalen Brunson tonight. He was heroic, right? Going back and forth with San Antonio, Victor Wembanyama, the referees. The New York Knicks got jobbed in this ball game. 12 free throws to 32. Discrepancy. My God, you can't make this up. Some questionable calls, dubious calls, late down the stretch in OT. This one was crazy, but we can't think about this one for too long because we've got to get back on track and we've got to continue winning. We'll break down the game with the, with the best chat in the biz tonight. We'll look around the league and what the Knicks need to do right, to secure the third, the second seed. But tonight, man, this was frustrating, right? What a game to lose in terms of what happened. DiVincenzo breaks the franchise single-season three-point shooting record on the season, surpassing Evan Fournier once again. So shout-out and congratulations to Dante DiVincenzo for his accomplishments, right? That won't be glossed over tonight, and nor will Jalen Brunson's heroic performance one point shy of tying Carmelo Anthony's franchise record in a single game, right? With 62, Carmelo, Jalen Brunson tonight, 61 in OT. He had 59 heading into OT, and I thought he was going to break it. But OT was funky, right? It was turnover city. Uh, we, we, uh, we got jobbed with a, with a dubious call uh, to a jump ball. Mitchell Robinson looked legal to me. Same with Mike Breen. And uh, what do you guys think? Also, the uh, the free throws, the traveling. Uh, Wembenyama sliding all over the court with the basketball as well. Very, very dubious calls late. But you know, look, the Knicks dug themselves too much of a hole early in this ball game. We should have won it earlier. right? We uh, Especially at the start of OT. Um, we didn't execute. Right, Jalen Brunson did make the right reads. They started to bring the double, <laughs> finally. Greg Popovich, right? And by the way, he should have been teed up about four times tonight as well. The referees continue to give other coaches and other players different kind of leniency that the New York Knicks players do not get, which is extremely frustrating. But look, we move, we learn from this. This is a playoff game and we're nine games away from dipping into the playoffs again. And there's going to be games like this every single night, like we talked about with Billy D last night. And I've got some things to back up and follow up with that, fam. But appreciate everyone for rocking out. Always, we don't duck the smoke, right? We win, we lose, we come on here, we chop it up, and we move on. We look ahead, right? But look, credit to San Antonio Wembenyama. They were up for this game early. Um, we know Pop, you know, some of the quotes he's made in the past you know, dating back to the Mook Morris saga where, uh, you know, the Spurs, he, he felt hard done by with that decision. And I think I, I saw an extra tenacity from the San Antonio Spurs tonight from the get-go. This is a 17-win team. And they, they weren't playing like that to start the ball game early with their efforts, right? And the Knicks just took this game lightly, you know. We thought we were just going to cruise in third gear. But... The, uh, the Spurs, to, to their credit, punched the New York Knicks in the mouth, right? And we responded, you know, like we were always, always going to do. But look, it ain't easy coming back 20 points down and having to fight all the way back. But let's continue to chop this up, fam. Um, as the, yeah, once again, anyone coming through, I thought the free throw discrepancy was one of the major stories of tonight. 12 free throws, New York Knicks, 32, San Antonio, right? You can't tell me that there's a 20 free throw difference tonight with Jalen Brunson being that aggressive, fam. But uh, unfortunately, we're not celebrating what would have been the biggest win of the season in terms of the circumstances. But buzzer beaters on point here in wishing the one and only Walt Clyde Frazier a happy birthday as well as he talked about on the broadcast. Anyone that would like to donate 
uh, to the Garden of Dreams Foundation in the name of Clyde. He would really greatly appreciate that as well. And uh, unfortunately, we, we lose a uh, foreman, Nick, a beloved uh, Louis Gossett Jr. passed away, unfortunately. So rest in peace. Uh, God rest his soul uh, as well. And we continue to talk about tonight's game and the free throw disparity. Appreciate everyone coming through. Gerard, Daryl, Buzzer, Michael, what's up? Daniel, Tony, and everyone coming through the building. Hidalgo, what's up? Uh, not too down with uh, the, the loss overall. How it happened is the most frustrating thing because it would have been a record night and another one to celebrate. But look, the Knicks dug themselves a hole and I think it's a good wake-up call heading into the playoffs. And I'm not really sweating the loss so much because... Knowing the NBA, and we might go into Boston and win that one. We might go to Milwaukee and win that ball game. There's so many more games left to win. Nine more to play. We'll peep some scores around the league. Uh, it looks like the Cavaliers did pick up a win, unfortunately. But the uh, Orlando Magic lost uh, as well. As I'll pull up the uh, the, the rest of the, the scores. Yeah, Orlando lost by three points. We had Cleveland, who were down... Uh, late in the game, but they clawed their way back to win. 117-114 over Philly. So good and bad there that Philly lost, but Cleveland won, unfortunately. So we've got to continue to battle and get this third seed. Uh, fair, but, you know, look, you know, three-point shooting wasn't great. 28% early. The Spurs, they were getting whatever they wanted, you know, and I thought the Knicks were a step slow. Could have been more physical, uh, early in the ball game, and they left it late, you know, no doubt about it. The second half, they picked things up, had an amazing third quarter. But at the end of the third, start of the fourth, is where this game swung. When Jalen Brunson sat, the New York Knicks did not get good minutes out of that situation. They didn't get good production, right? We'll talk about the bench. Bogdanovich was really god-awful today. We see the chat joking about leaving him back in, uh, leaving him in Texas, right? Uh, frustrating. We didn't get a good production in those minutes because I mean, God, Jalen Brunson was given it his all tonight. He deserved more help, right? And uh, that's similar to what, you know, we talked about last night with Billy D about can we win? Can we go far in the playoffs without a Julius Randle and without an OG and an Obi, right? It's going to be physical like tonight, guys. It's going to be bully ball. You need size, right? To have four guards, you know, I, I, I agreed with Bill, but I also disagreed with some of the points he made as well. But yeah, my God, he came with the fire and the cold water last night as well. But in essence, Bill was trying to talk about how different playoff basketball is. And we saw examples tonight, right? When the refs let f extra physical play, the New York Knicks got to find other ways to win the ball game, right? And when Jalen Brunson continues to get hacked and whacked, we got to find different ways to score and execute guys down the stretch. I thought Tibbs called a solid play. Uh, you know, we got we got a really good look late. Precious Achua grabbed that rebound. Uh, unfortunately, threw a hot potato to Devo and fumbled it out of bounds, right? I mean, that might happen once out of 10 times. So, you know, again, I, I kind of more look towards the referees, Today, I'll look more towards the end of the third, start of the fourth. When the Knicks had all the momentum, it looked like we were just going to put a foot, foot on the gas and, uh, and leave them in the past and, and basically uh, you know, run away with this ball game. But we didn't. You know, They went on a huge run. They pushed it back up to nine with Brunson on the bench at the start of the fourth. And, of course, he came back and we clawed our way back. But... Uh, yeah, the, the discrepancy was too much. Guys were gassed. I mean, we had to we had to get a, a, a historic night from Brunson. And I will say, man, I feel disappointed he didn't get the record. You know, I mean, much respect to Carmelo. The, the 62-point game, his Knicks single-game record lives on. But we know it's just a matter of time before a JB breaks that record, you know, tonight. Uh, but yeah, I'll shout you guys out before we dive into the grades and, and, and give out uh, the, uh, the, 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 the flowers, right, for some of these Knicks tonight and also come with the fire. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Buzzer Beater also says, I wish Brunson had taken that record. Yeah, 
the fact that he had 59 heading into OT, uh, I thought his OT was okay. But, I, I, you know, there, there's some things that I could feel that Brunson could have done better at in terms of uh, some of the reads. But, look, he was, he was unselfish, you know, to... Uh, we, we, you know, when you're hot, you've got to win the the ball game for your team. That's just the way I see it. Some people see it differently. He made good reads, but he was unselfish, you know. T and I felt like Brunson could have taken over a little bit more, right? I mean, you know, it's tough. The other guys sometimes aren't expecting the ball. They're not clutches him as well. But yeah, uh, a couple of shots missed around the rim. Unfortunately, one just bobbled out. Mitch tipped it back in. We got called for. Offensive interference, man. It's just like we we didn't catch a break tonight. There was a lot of calls 50-50 that just went against us, especially the jump ball, the Wemby slide, uh, you know, Popovich basically uh, harassing the referee and not getting a technical. That was absurd, man. I've never seen that this season. Popovich was basically like ready to go to blows with the official, and he still didn't get teed up. So the NBA controlled this ball game tonight, right? Houston, we talked about that. The great Houston robbery. This is in Texas as well, my friends. So man, uh, glad we don't have to go back to Texas because we've been stooged in Texas this season. My God, man, it's been unreal, right? When Benyama finishes with 40, right? The NBA, the, the media will ride that jock strap. The real hero tonight was Jalen Brunson. He didn't get as much help as we needed, unfortunately. Hart, um, you know, tried, but obviously the uh, the shooting tonight really hurt. And I think that's what we might see a little bit of in the playoffs as well. With Hart having to put the ball on the floor and then make another read, another pass. Uh, see, when Brunson gets separation, he gets to the cup, but he gets swarmed. It'll be a kick out to the open man, which is normally Josh Hart you know, eight times out of 10, Hart will, you know, either, uh, you know, hesitate taking the shot. He'll either take it, likely miss it, sometimes hit it, but he'll, he'll drive. He'll make another pass as well. The shot clock goes down. So we've got to sort that out. You know, Bogdanovich is unplayable for me right now. Yeah. You can't really play bogey in these big games, defensively, uh, poor offensively, not good enough to justify playing as well it's going to hurt us in the playoffs right we had deuce mcbride have the shot uh, arguably that would have won the ball game to not uh to uh to, to seal it would have been a buzzer beater all over the news but deuce mcbride got that wide open look missed and uh, we went to ot right i was feeling confident guys at ot because uh, we had the you know we had the hot hand we had jalen brunson um yeah, it's just unfortunate, man. OT went the way it did early. I thought we missed our chances in the first uh, three possessions. You know, we got the ball first in OT. You have to put the scoreboard pressure on and score first. We we missed. They went down. We got a turnover or a stop. We had another chance to go up at the start of OT. And we, uh, we came up short again with that situation, unfortunately. Then we got another chance because the Spurs turned it over and missed again. And uh, it was basically a calamity to start OT. And uh, we had our chances, right? But look, man, uh, five fifteen games over 500. Um, fighting in the fourth spot, Orlando lost. So there's, there's that separation still there. The, the dream to finish third is still well and truly alive with nine games to play. But for half a game... Today, we give it back to Cleveland, right? With Donovan Mitchell returning as well. But win or lose tonight, man, the story has to be JB, 61 points, right? One point shy of Carmelo Anthony's record. But bigger story ahead is the playoffs, man. This guy can be unstoppable, you know? Talk about the fools that said this guy can't be the best player on the court, Right? The fools that said this man couldn't be an all-star. The fools that said this man couldn't be N all NBA. I mean, he's making fools out of all of those people that doubted this guy. And Jalen Brunson is clutch, right? Helped his teammates late, made reads, 
unfortunately we we just didn't have enough you know but my god did he catch fire in that third it's like someone poked the bear and uh, ticked him off you know and tonight i mean almost a franchise record he has to get an a plus plus let me know your grade your thoughts about jb of course he's missing the game ball but he's a hero for me he's a he's a new york hero new york knicks hero for for what he's uh, accomplished this season but look tonight was extra special i mean you know career high just forget about the franchise for a minute it's jalen brunson's career high and uh the, you know the guy is just going from strength to strength you know the the believers that felt like he has another gear that he can reach is coming to fruition right now a plus plus two buzzer beaters coming with the fire too let's get it appreciate you is it too late to get grimes back you know it's funny you say that too uh grimes was just announced uh, they just announced grimes is out for the season as well he's he's shutting it down with a with an injury fam so looks like grimes is dealing with his own health concerns we wish him well um the trade hasn't worked out for us but hey we can't also forget shake milton shake milton who we signed i'm, I'm ha happy with the minutes that he he brought what do you guys think about shake milton he got meaningful minutes in that second quarter you know for a guy that's just come off the bench cold i'm not going to overreact to it but i felt like he was pretty solid you know and if i'm really stretched of bodies over bogdanovich burks and uh, and shake milton i'm going to give shake milton a, a you know a shake you know for the next nine games we'll see right but yeah as we talked about with bill daughtry if you haven't seen it last night check it out you know he he was talking about og being obviously really pivotal og needs to come back for the knicks to make a deep run um, og or randall uh, obviously both prayers up ideally one or the other at least at minimum because uh the the offense the the shooting the physicality that they bring is big for this ball club and you felt like yeah the knicks just need another a body in the post just another guy to rough up some bodies grab a few boards uh you know and stamp their authority in this one uh, but look, a lot of heroes tonight that skied for, tried to sky for the rebounds, uh, getting us jump balls as well. Yeah, the refs just did not let, allow us to be as physical as the Spurs were. You know, and as I said, disgusting 12 free throws uh, to 32 as well. But the Knicks had their chances, you know. No doubt we were stooged, guys, but uh, we had our chances as well. Uh, <coughs> what's up, LB? Michael Drake buzzing in the chat. <clears throat> you can't rely on the three ball, Michael says. In the fourth, you've got to go to the rim and score. Yeah, 100% agree with that, but sometimes the game's just going different, man. You know, if you're getting hacked and you're not getting a call, it's really tough. You know, sometimes you just want to take an open shot because you're worried. You know, you might get stripped, you might get hand-checked, and you might get leveled and still without a call as well i mean um we we we, we got the the flagrant call on on isaiah hartenstein so that was big uh they you know they basically tried to rip isaiah hartenstein's arm out of his socket you know and, and we got that one but we didn't get much else man as you see it it's not an error 10 out of 12 free throws for the whole game right this was an overtime game ladies and gentlemen as well Right, 53 minutes we played tonight of basketball with the new physical defense in NBA and the Knicks just shot 12 free throws, right? You know, some teams like Jimmy Butler or Giannis, they shoot 12 free throws in a quarter. And the New York Knicks had 12 for the whole 53 minutes, right? Right, they need to be investigating that. Forget about you know, Jean Tay Porter and Toronto and that betting scandal, start investigating the referees, my friend. Because I don't see how a team can have 12 free throws in 53 minutes of basketball. Right, it's insane. Right, Jalen Brunson only shooting six. There as well. <clears throat> yep, as uh, Jao Barrera also says, the referees were atrocious. 100%. But we've seen this before. We've seen it all season. Right. 
Now, for the fact is that we're going to have to start adjusting to the playoffs and what that is going to bring, right? We're probably going to need to line up four centers because, right, we're going to have to be extra physical, right, with, with, this, with this lenient refereeing. <coughs> LB says, as soon as Bogdanovich hit the, hit the floor, we went from being down one to down 12, yeah. It was something like that. Yeah, it was a tough stretch, man. The second, the, th the third, uh, we had our chances. But I, I really didn't like the way we started the ball game. You know, we didn't bring the same level of intensity. And the biggest feature of that was we were getting beat down the court basically every single possession. You know, sometimes Wemby beat the, beat, beat the entire Knicks down the court as well. And I was, at that point, I was just like, man, okay, we, we really need to, to, to wake up. Uh, and we did, um, but yeah, they punched us in the mouth early. It was basically a sucker punch, uh, and we and we poked. They poked the bear. Jalen Brunson responded like he like he does. Um, you know, on on nights where uh, you know I understand how people want good even scoring and ball movement. The it's easy to look at the box score and say yeah, Brunson basically you know was was dominant in terms of the ball, but if you looked at the way, you know, the first quarter, the second quarter was going, right? We were down 20, 21, and we were in quicksand. So we needed somebody to lift us up out of that. You know, and, and we had that guy. He was unselfish in OT uh, as well. I just didn't feel like enough people came in and stepped up. I mean, he would have made the read of the game, finding Deuce McBride for the final shot in regulation and had Deuce, like he's been swishing recently, if he swished that, it would have been game over, you know, stone cold buzzer beater on that one. And we would have been dancing, but unfortunately it rimmed out and uh, we had OT to, to pull this one out, but we did not, fam. Yet yeah, Wall Street Dame saying how physical the, uh, the East and the playoffs is going to be. Yeah, this is a good warm up for that, fam. Did tonight make you guys a little bit more concerned about you know, Randall dealing with the physicality as well. Let me know. Um, I'm worried about OG and Randall, but OG a little less. Uh, elbow, obviously, you know, you can kind of deal with the soreness, the pain a little little easier. Uh, that is a 6 out of 10 for me in terms of concern. Like we asked you guys the chat last night with, uh, with Bill, uh, the level of concern. What is your level of concern with OG? And I'll ask you with Randall as well, in terms of them coming back healthy enough to have a big impact. You know, for, for me, OG is probably at a six because I feel like if he's fully cleared and he's ready to play, he'll impact the game, no worries. But the six is basically, I'm worried if it's going to be a game in, you know, get hurt, get hurt, game out, miss a couple games, come back, that kind of interruptedness. You know, I, I, I don't want that in the playoffs, you know, I want... OG back fully healthy, you know, able to play every single game. That's what we need. Now with Julius, man, I completely understand the hurdle with the shoulder there. The pain, the, the, the discomfort level might start to, you know, elevate, you know, when he's back. Uh, if he makes it for the start of round one, obviously there's only nine games left. He hasn't uh, been cleared for a full, you know, hardcore um, contact yet. So you're thinking, man, it's going to come real close to the end of the regular season or, you know, maybe just minutes restriction in, in first round of the playoffs. So my level of concern with Julius Randle is probably seven, seven, eight uh, in terms of, you know, how effective he's going to be. Uh, now, I'm still keeping the faith, but yeah, my, my level of concern is, is that, uh, guys. Um uh, also, yeah, Mitchell Robinson was a beast tonight. He was uh, hampered from falling awkwardly. It didn't look like he, you know, really rolled an ankle or anything. I think he was just hobbling and came up a bit, a bit gimp. But he battled tonight. He ran up and down. You know, a little bit concerned with that. Hopefully, it's nothing major. We'll keep everybody up to date. Uh, but Mitch did hit a, a, a clutch free throw late. He was one of two from the free throw line. Yeah, you look, free throws were pretty accurate tonight, 10 of 12. So that didn't lose us the ball game. 37.8% uh, from deep as well. 
we did obviously come alive late. Brunson, uh, 5 of 13. Devo, 6 of 12. Hart, 2 of uh, 5. Uh, now, Miles McBride to, today, 1 of 4. So not great, not too bad. But we yeah, we needed that, that game-winning shot. That would have sealed it from, uh, from uh, Deuce McBride, right? What a game. Still catching our breath, right? You know... The, uh, the, the fight this team continues to show, they're never out of the ball game, uh, really. You know, and unfortunately, again, we have to note Isaiah Hartenstein was out due to foul trouble, uh, missed basically the, the final, I think, four minutes of regulation, three, four minutes, missed the entire OT. And, uh, and Mitchell Robinson, you know, coming in basically with, uh, you know, not much um, minutes under his belt. You know, he really fought as hard as he could. He was struggling in terms uh, of breathing, in terms of, um, you know, impacting the ball game as well. But he gave he gave us everything he had. And I think he's just going to get better. Right, so let's talk about the next New York Knick. In today's game, Dante DiVincenzo finally breaks the, uh, the New York Knicks single season record. For most made threes in a season, surpassing Evan Fournier. Shout out to DiVincenzo. Again, he was solid from deep today. Uh, made huge plays, you know, and basically he's deserving of, of what he's achieved this season, right? Uh, I don't know if even the biggest fans of the deal would have predicted this, but here we sit, man. Dante is officially top of the New York Knicks tree of all-time three-point snipers on the season, with 242 triples, surpassed Evan Fournier. And uh, just great to have him now in the record books. And I think he can, he can go one better next season, right? He did gamble on a couple of pos uh, critical possessions, found himself out of position. But we've seen that all season. That's part of Devo's game. He likes to be aggressive. You know, he's an def uh, aggressive defender, like Josh Hart, you know. They back themselves to make things happen. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it does not. But you, it's hard to change who you are as a player. It's, you know, the DNA. But I guess in the playoffs, he might just have to adjust that a little bit, right? And just play play some of these possessions a little bit more safe, you know, and not find yourself out of position, right? But, yeah, in terms of uh, he'll get the accolade for breaking the record. But he played 49 minutes, 7 of 13, 20 points, unfortunately a minus 10. So we, we look into that. Two assists, six rebounds, and two steals, right? But 50% from deep, right? That's, that's very, very good. Uh, 12 uh, three-point attempts is, uh, is, is what we need, right? Obviously, without some other gunners, JB can't do it all alone. And uh, he came to play, DiVincenzo. Unfortunately, he was a part of that final... Nick's possession that he, he just did, wasn't expecting the pass, right? I didn't see too many times on the replay squad, guys, but what do you feel about Precious, you know, getting the rebound and kicking it out to Devo uh, for that, you know, that quick possession? Um, yeah, it's tough. You know, you've just got to be clinical with the ball late. You've got to take care of, of the ball and, and execute in these tight games, right? It's literally a possession that decides it, man. And if we're going to lose a game like this, man, in a heartbreaking fashion, it's, you know, you want it to be a game that doesn't mean as much, you know, before the playoffs begin. Uh, I thought this was a really good tune-up. This is probably going to be one of the closest games, hopefully, we play in up until the playoffs as well. So guys are going to get used to these big minutes, you know, critical possessions with the crowd, hostile, the referee sometimes against you. You just got to really uh, get it done. You know, I mean, you know, every single player, every single Nick uh, player in that locker room is going to feel frustrated, you know, today as well. Frustrated at themselves because they, you know, they came out slow, but also frustrated with other other things. The refereeing, um, you know, the coaching from, from Popovich, you know, being being overly harassing of the officials. Yeah, as well, that was that was what really frustrated me. Um, so, look, we need other options down the stretch as well. This.
gave us a preview of what we, you know, what these final possessions could look like as well. Shout out, Will. Uh, says, yeah, Pop needed that T, if not an ejection, with s- uh, screaming at the top of his lungs in the ref's face, needed to get restrained as well. Yeah, it's so frustrating, Will, man. Like, Draymond Green can get away with that as well. Popovich. It's like the referees are scared. Right? It, 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 it's mind-boggling, man, with that situation. But, yeah, we, we know how corrupt things are. I mean, let's be real. We're seeing, you know, betting scandals. We're seeing new investigations. We saw the Houston robbery. We saw that referee, the Boston one that retired at the start of the season that was subject to an NBA investigation, but he retired. So the NBA just dropped the investigation. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get too deep into it tonight, but yeah, you guys know. You guys know, you guys know what's up, you know. You, you you see what happens. Um, you know, the referee does uh, do try to manipulate certain scenarios. Obviously, Wemby is the future, one of the future faces of the NBA. But I like to think that Jalen Brunson deserves more respect than what he's getting as well. Because he's a 27, 28-year-old star, rising star in this league as well. And, the, you know, one of the faces of the biggest um, teams in the league the biggest media market now tonight almost one point away from tying the franchise record with that situation but yeah look Brunson was hard on himself towards the the end of the heat series uh made the nice um you know the plays de- you know down the stretch obviously OT it just didn't work out for us but I think if he had his chance he would do things the same right but guys just got to be ready to get the ball make things happen. I mean, he was on fumes as well. Let's not discount that. I mean, to go for uh, 53 minutes uh, with, with this entire game, and Brunson played uh, 43 of them, you know, and to put up 40, 47 shots is, is crazy. Uh, but look, yeah, DiVincenzo, solid game. I mean, minus 10 is uh, is reflective of that couple of those runs where the Spurs just yeah uh, they were hitting shots early as well which they haven't been this season but we were giving them open looks you know so we've got to be quicker on the closeouts and all of that uh, but uh, Devo's on target man he breaks the franchise single season record right more than 242 threes on the season right talk about snipers right uh, in, in the elite Nick shooters that we looked up to, man, the Alan Houston's, John Starks, you know, the Hubert Davises, people before then uh, as well, um, you know, and, and now DiVincenzo holds that record for a single season, right? So he's, he's in elite, elite Nick's company. Uh, I'm so happy that we signed him, a uh, big time player for the playoffs as well, and we're going to need more of it, right? So... We, uh, we hope for more with Devo. You know, for me, you know, the fact that he can D up well, he can handle the ball, he can make some, some plays, uh, he makes things happen. And that's what I appreciate the most, right? He's a two-way player. So, any battles, right? So, I mean, today, he's going to get an A, right, for the shooting, uh, breaking the record. And, uh, of course, the... Uh, you know, the plays down the stretch. And uh, congratulations to Devo, right? But he would have traded all of that, and I would have traded all this for the win. You know, that's that's all that we needed. You know, unfortunately, we just couldn't get it done, right? <clears throat> LB says, we had a movie about a referee that came out. They got kicked out the NBA. Yep, Absolutely. Always good OT training. Yep. We did make one other this year. I don't remember the Spurs are on a good run. Uh, beat the full Suns team three days ago. Yeah, look, uh, Wemby's first full season. He's definitely looking more comfortable, man. Um, and no doubt he probably hit the biggest shot of the game. You know, now that I just remembered, man, he hit that stone cold three, which was, you know, 
credit to him. Uh, I thought it was a little fluky. Yeah, me personally, you know, it was a it was a scramble play, you know, shot clock ending. He just threw it up, man, and it just went down. But yeah, he's been working on the shot. Uh, when you're seven foot, when you're seven foot five, you know, the three point shot isn't as big as you know it is to a lot of us because you know you you're so close to the bucket still. Um, yeah, my first impressions of Wemby is yeah he's well and truly on his way to being a you know a superstar. Uh, credit to him. Uh, but, but obviously I felt the referees that would, you know, they were, they were giving it to him on a silver platter, you know, today as well. Isaiah Hartenstein fouling out. You're kidding me, right? You know, one guy can be more physical than the other. It's, it's not a level playing field, really. I mean, um, you know, had we had a full strength Mitch with full, uh, you know, full gas tank, I think we win this one easily, right? Mitch would have absolutely beasted earlier in this game as well. And look, he was a big factor late. Isaiah went out and then Mitch stepped in, got us that big offensive rebound and put back as well. So we'll talk about Mitch and Isaiah next. Actually, I want to combine the two because it, it's fitting that they, they both, you know, kind of tag team substituted for unfortunate reasons, but yeah, Isaiah had to play 28 minutes, was fouled out, six fouls. He was a plus 10 in those minutes. So that lets you know, big run, big influence in the game. But yeah, was uh, was called for a lot of you know, ticky-tack stuff, guys. Um, but yeah, we move and we keep moving. These guys are going to be huge for us. We can bully a lot of these teams with with uh, the, 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 the length on the glass. Now, I do share some of the concerns that Bill talked about last night about the power forward spot, you know, as, uh, as Buzz has gone with the B- minus for Di Vincenzo, uh, saying we needed a bit more from him tonight. His teammates unfairly carried a huge load. Yep. I think a lot more other guys could have given us a bit more. I mean, Dante, 12, 6 of 12, uh, I don't know if he could have given much more than that. Maybe some other areas, let us know. But yeah, I mean, 6 of 12, 50% from deep. I don't know, you know, how much more Devo could have given. But I, I feel like, obviously, maybe in the OT period, down the stretch. Uh, but yeah, Brunson was really you know, controlling the offense a lot. You know, it was it was tough. But uh, I thought, the, the, you know, we made some good reads. Obviously, Di Vincenzo did turn the ball over late as well. So I could... I could understand that as well. Um, but yeah, back to my point about the size, guys. Like, you know, how healthy Isaiah and Mitch will be is going to be critical, you know, down the stretch of this season, right? As I'll, uh, I'll bring the two up on the screen and, and they can share it. Um, in terms of our ability to swarm teams, dominate the glass... That's how we really dominate and win ball games, um, and 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 be effective around the cup. Now, with the the Achilles that that um, Isaiah is dealing with, right? They might keep him on a thirty minutes thing, and and maybe they give Mitch the other eighteen. I could see that happening. I could see uh, maybe an even more split. Depends how quickly Mitch gets back up to like match rhythm. And speed tonight he was breathing heavily so we are asking a lot you know straight out for Mitch to play huge minutes uh, obviously the leg is still a concern as well so you want to be careful with that yeah as well but you combine the two and you get a force man that's going to dominate some games especially on the glass and uh, blocking shots right tonight they had to share the load of battling Wemby right and the officials right so mitch was 19 minutes three of nine one of two from the free throw 12 rebounds man seven offensive so second game back mitchell robinson breaking more records in terms of offensive rebounds around the nba 12 rebounds total seven points minus 10 
Um, so I think he'll be better once he's uh, got, got, got the cardio up a bit more. He'll be in, in better positions. He'll be quicker down the court. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. He did get a few alley-oops today as well. Brunson did find Mitch on the chemistry uh, pick and roll. That was good to see. Um, but a critical play late where I felt Mitch, Mitch or Devo both got the tip, you know, which was a good tip back in. The referees ruled it out. Man, I thought that was dubious at best. I thought the, the ball was bobbling on the rim. And I do feel like it was, you know, a call that you, in real time, you know, like, you know most refs would have probably let go. I thought that was a, yeah, a really unlucky call. We, you know, it was a good tip back. So, but look, that's what we're going to get. You know, we can preview. We'll see, you know, more of that with Mitch getting back seven offensive boards. Today was nice. Uh, you know, they're both Knicks warriors, man. They battle and they get it done. So they're going to get the uh, the warrior icon uh, tonight. Look, you know, Isaiah was the plus 10, Mitch minus 10, but Mitch filled in down the stretch and was huge, made big plays. I mean, one of two from the free throw. That's as bad as good as, as we can expect. Uh, both of them had their struggles throughout the game as well. Uh, you know, obviously the early start, there were some struggles for, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Wemby assignment, you know, and Isaiah, you know, just trying to get in the right positions as well. But yeah, he, look, he was out of position a bit. I'm going to give both of them a B for, for their overall game. But I thought Mitch, you know, stepped in, stepped up pretty big late down the stretch there. It was a bit unlucky as well, but yeah, he'll be better. How did you guys see it? Will's gone with the A- minus for a warrior-like effort from the two guys. Yeah. Tough assignment for Wemby when he's getting such a, you know, a kind whistle as well. That's, yeah, that, that, that's really tough for the, for the big men to deal with. Now, a, a rebounding-wise, you know, they were both excellent. But Mitch obviously excelled a bit more, and he's going to continue to eat, playing off the bench. He'll get those putbacks the easy, uh, easy buckets. Um, interestingly, block shots. Mitch didn't block a shot tonight, and neither did Isaiah. So that's kind of a uh, that that's kind of unusual, you know. Yeah, you know, the Spurs were quick with their offense today. Pop was, you know, doing pop things. They were doing the, um, you know, double screens. They were doing the uh, the the multiple cuts, player movement. All of that, we, we did see the, the Spurs offense in full effect. Um, I thought they got an above average game from your Devin Vassells, your, your Keldon Johnsons as well. And of course, Champagne was a, was a bit of a nick killer early today as well to, to, to help Wemby and, and, and kind of give him a, a bit of support. Uh, buzzer beater saying Dante should have shot the ball more. So yeah, he should have got his attempts up. Yep, I hear you on that. <clears throat> I did think that, yeah, the, the game was just tough in terms of having to constantly dig ourselves out of that hole, you know, because defensively we were step slow. Every time we got close or um, making a bigger run, we would let our foot off the gas and they would get a, a good run as well. We were all over the place defensively. It was, it was just not a great game defensively, um, but... The referees, again, did not help with that. And Buzzer also says, Mitch and iHeart together, B+. Plus. The two of them did the best that they could, especially in those limited minutes. Yep, shout out. Now, the biggest thing is for me is, is health, and then we can, we can really dominate at the center spot, right? Power forward, it's going to be interesting again. We need OG or Randall. Because I don't like Hart playing a lot of minutes at the four. And of course, Precious can be, can be solid, right? But again, the playoffs will be different. Um, and uh, is he a little bit undersized against some of the playoff power forwards that, that we might face? You know, I don't want Precious Achua to be guarding Paolo Banquero for 38 minutes in a playoff performance as well. So that's going to be tough. 
We know OG dealing with the separate injury, the elbow. Julius with the left shoulder concern as well. Uh, again, I mean, I want, I want to know what you guys think. Like, what's your prediction for when OG is going to return and when Randall is going to return? Because there's nine games left, right? So uh, w w what, what's the vibe? What are you thinking, right? I think OG will be back in the regular season, right? Probably going to be maybe towards somewhere between five, four, three games left. I think I think that might be the earliest we get OG back because they're going to be a little bit extra cautious and, uh, and make sure they don't rush, you know, him coming back. You know, in case he was able to get a knock again, and then miss, you know, having to miss a little bit of time, you know, obviously the inflammation has to be fully gone, and then he can take uh, contact and get back. But for Julius, yeah, I mean, it's like it, it's like how long is a piece of string? It's it's it, it really could be anything, you know. He could surprise us, and we get an announcement that he's. He's finally cleared for full uh, contact tomorrow. Or it's more likely, though, I see Julius being saved for, like, the final three games as well. Um, and if it's not the regular season, then it's seriously just make and do with the best that we have, you know, and, and, and get Randall ready, get him practicing when he's ready, and then try to fit him in, in into a playoff series, you know. There's, there's literally no other choice. You know, we, 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 you know, we'll be doing the, the, the best thing that we can, you know, and Julius does need to come back fully healthy so that when he is back, hopefully he doesn't, you know, miss too much time after that, right? Um, but it's not going to be the full, I don't think it will be the full 38 minutes, 40 minutes, right? I think it's going to be, you know, see how he feels, play under control, see how it looks, and then uh, ramp up the minutes, from that <clears throat> will says man i don't know I, I don't think randall's coming back to be honest og hopefully the last couple of games of the season agree with that with og randall i'm still not i'm not, I'm not giving up the 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 prospect that he'll be back for the regular season but for me it's looking more likely by the day for somewhere between the first round playoff series, fam. Uh, now they've ruled, you know, they obviously they've opted not to do the surgery, which means they're willing to just, you know, give it as much time as it needs, you know, right? If and when he's ready, get him back in for the playoffs, right? That's better than nothing, right? So even if he's not ready for game one, right, we, you know, we've got enough to try to win ball games you know, and pull it out, win a first round series even. But after that, it gets dicey, you know, to win the second round of a playoff series against what would be a, t you know, a tough team. You're going to need a guy like a Randall, as we saw tonight. If they trap Brunson, if they make things a little difficult in terms of swarming the guys that are hot, then other guys need to step up out of their comfort zone and really hit shots. And we're talking about Josh Hart hitting shots. We're talking about Isaiah and Mitch scoring more, being efficient. We're talking more production from the bench with Bogey and, um, you know, and Burks and, and, and Shake Milton, you know, as well. So, look, yeah, you know, the disappointing thing is outside of tonight as well, guys, is the trade. The trade for Grimes, Bogdanovich, Burks. It hasn't given us what I hoped and what we hoped it was going to do, which gave the bench, you know, consistent scoring punch when JB is off the floor. You know, like tonight's game, no, unequivocally, the Knicks would have won if JB, when JB was sitting at the end of the third, start of the fourth, in those small three, four minutes where the, where the deficit got back to, to nine or 12, right? If we just had someone that could, that could hold it down, you know, in those minutes, that would have been enough, right? We were only down like two, two or three, and then it got back to 12, right? And then, yeah, it was, it was tough. Um, <clears throat> Buzzer Beater says, we as fans got to contact the league 
about this foul throw, free throw discrepancy. We are the customers who are dissatisfied with the product. We are being sold. Everyone, yeah, definitely are right. You know, you express your displeasure at NBA referees, NBA officials on X. Uh, the Knicks media does a good job of, like, you know, in the pool reports, asking why was this call, why was that not called. But, yeah, it's just so inconsistent, man. Now, next up, we'll talk about Josh Hart, right? We've given out the flowers for JB, almost a franchise record, but career high, 61 points, bucket, Brunson Burner tonight, right? He's going to continue to get his flowers, but the dub will, will mean more to Brunson than the 61 points. We gave out the flowers for DiVincenzo, breaking the franchise uh, single season record. We've given out the flowers for Isaiah and Mitch. And we'll talk about McBride and Josh Hart. Now, as uh, Hart will be up first, man. And we gave a B to the big men. Hart was uh, 4 of 13, 2 of 5 from deep, though. Hit both free throws, 12 uh, rebounds, 4 offensive, 8 assists from Josh Hart. One steal, two turnovers, 12 points, and a plus 20 from Jay Hart, man. I mean, some of the times he's on the court, it's it's literally helter-skelter. It's up and down, right? It's sometimes a brick and a shot, but then he goes the other way, and he gets into the passing lane, and he'll get you a steal. Again, he's a very valuable player to have, right? And a luxury at times as well. The way he's rebounding... Four offensive rebounds is, is insane again. 12 total. But eight assists today was special. Obviously, Brunson needed someone else to, to make a couple plays and handle the rock. The plus 20 is very impressive. Uh, him and Brunson alone were the two plus 20s in that lineup together uh, for those stretches. But the one downside, or the biggest downside to playing Josh Hart down the stretch is... You guys already know. The defense can sag off. The defense can focus in on somebody else. So that's that's just what we got to live with right now. You know, he's got to make a good play. He's got to hit the shot. And uh, we come up with the dub. Um, now, sometimes he leaves his feet. He, he runs, uh, runs into traffic. Then he jumps. Uh, and then he's got to, you know, scramble and find the right pass. But man, is he an absolute warrior, is Josh Hart. Again, the rebounding, assisting, and steals. Knows where to be on the floor on the defensive side, right? Fights uh, above his size. Yeah, and just is, is a winning, winning kind of player. Um, he's just not gifted with the offensive shot right now. And he's putting in work. You know, he's been putting in work after the All-Star break. There's talk he's going to work with J.J. Redick. In the uh, in the off season, which is which is good to hear that a guy who's 28, well, you know, is, is serious to to continue to work on his craft and get better at that, and and, and we're going to benefit. But yeah, right now you live and die with 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 his um, strengths weaknesses. You know, obviously he's a he's a he's a, he's a warrior, he's a hound dog on the court, so you want that, right? But on the offensive side, when it's when it's money time, to we got to we got to figure it out. Uh, we got we got to figure it out and you know and, and be ready. He's got to be ready to quickly catch and shoot. Trust the shot, right? If he misses, you know, trust that someone's going to grab the board. Um, just just yeah, uh, don't hesitate. But I've been really impressed with Josh's playmaking. Obviously, he helped us get back into the ball game, right? We can't gloss over that, guys. You know, he was part of that huge run. You know, I mean, he's a plus twenty in a four point loss. So that lets you know that he was part of every single big, huge run that we were. Uh, he was on the court for um, in this game. So, I mean, we take the loss, which is still frustrating. But yeah, I mean, this guy battled. This guy did so much. I'm going to give Hart a B plus. You know, for his performance today. Again, digging ourselves a hole, but then clawing our way back out. You know, and he's 
the warrior, uh, the best role player in the league, in my opinion. Shot the ball pretty decent from three, but obviously it's not his main strength. Um, and he has been better statistically since the All-Star break, so, so that's good as well. That lets us know that in the playoffs it's going to be a case of you know, hopefully he, he, hits, he hits those shots and, you know, and hopefully it doesn't even come down to it as much. But, I mean, plus 20, again, on the court today in a four-point loss. We don't get to that the opportunities without, without Jay Hart. Uh, <clears throat> now, unfortunately, with today's loss, as Buzzer says, appreciate you for this statistic as well. Um, uh, you know, I've been watching this closely. Because I think 50 wins is significant, but now the equation is six wins, three losses, and we get to that 50 burger, fam, on the season. Now, the reason I don't, I, I try not to get too low on, on on frustrating losses like this is because we might come back and uh, you know, and, and and steal a win in Boston or steal a win in Milwaukee, and we make up for this one as well. So. It's all about getting to the playoffs healthy in a in a in a good seed, and uh, we're going to bring up the standings shortly, and uh, and look at the uh, where we sit, as Orlando picked up a loss, Philly also lost, but Cleveland beat them. Cleveland won, as well, and obviously Milwaukee did not play today, but Milwaukee lost yesterday as well. So we we missed a great opportunity to actually pull within one game of the second seed with today's loss fam. But look, nine games left, man, we got to be ready. We got to uh, continue to take the rest of these games serious uh, and pick up as many of wins as, as we can. Right. And uh, next we'll talk about miles deuce McBride coming up. Would have been the hero had he knocked down the buzzer beater to uh, to end regulation, wide open look, man. It was it was money in my eyes. It was like once he caught it, I was like, man, Brunson, great read. Brunson kind of found himself in a little bit of traffic with the shot clock moving down, solid uh, defensive possession from the Spurs, and the ball fell to Deuce McBride. It would have been the shot of his season, uh, early season to date. But yeah, unfortunately, it didn't go down, and we went to OT. But we'll talk about Deuce's impact. Yeah, moving into the playoffs uh, tonight uh, wasn't great early in terms of when Brunson was sitting and are needing to give us a little bit of production scoring. But he's been holding us down big time, you know, up until this stretch. Yeah, and he's become one of the feel-good stories of this season so far. And he's going to get his minutes, right? He is well and truly factoring into Tibbs' playoff rotation. Because out of the backup guards, whether it's Burks, you know, Devo handling the ball some, Hart, Shake Milton, anyone else, right? You have to trust Deuce McBride after Jalen Brunson. He's the second uh, guard, you know, lead guard after Brunson that you trust the most running the backup point. And I think the minutes show that 45 tonight, three of nine, one of four from deep. And uh, he went three assists with two offensive rebounds. He was hustling, came up with a couple of loose balls as well. Four steals, getting gritty. Uh, one turnover, which is pretty solid. Uh, seven points, though, on a minus five. So I think if we're being critical, that's ultimately where, you know, you know he he'll fill that down in terms of the uh the production offensively seven points minus five the three of three of nine one of four as well but we'll be singing a different story if that final shot went down towards the end <clears throat> yet we're waiting uh, on the bucks to lose more games it'll be so wavy says i'm praying the bucks lose tomorrow we will uh, check out who they're playing as well. Danny's in the building. What's good, fam? We should have won this ball game. We are better than them. 100%. Yep. Now, 
I feel like it's a combination of things too tonight with players just reaching the end of a grueling season as well, guys, you know. Uh, players basically are on fumes right now, best believe it. And they're giving it their all. But it's uh, basically survival of the strongest, the fittest. You know, any team can knock off anyone. I think right now we're going to see some funky results like we talked about last night with Bill. You know, some players have their careers high in these last few games of the season because, yeah, everyone's kind of focused on other things, fam, whether it's the uh, Cancun, um, Barbados, you know, whether they're thinking about Mexico, um, Africa, uh, you know, their, their holidays, whether they're thinking about fishing, um, whether they're thinking about just getting to the playoffs healthy, whether some players are thinking about contract extensions and just trying to have a 60-piece, you know, it's a, it's a case of where we're going to see some some pretty funky, you know, uh, games, I think, from here on out. Like, today was one of them, man. Um, but, yeah, look, the Knicks will have Oklahoma back home now, and that is on uh, on coming up on uh, Sunday, right? So we get after it on Sunday at MSG. And then we head to South Beach, Miami, where you know it's going to be another playoff type performance, man. <clears throat> so what are your grades for Deuce today? <clears throat> Four steals. I mean, that's that's excellent. He'll get a, uh, a Warrior badge. He stepped it up this season. Uh, most One of the most improved. Yeah, he'll be in the in in the conversation. Um, some uh, some great statistics I've got uh, for Deuce McBride as a NBA a starter. As I'll bring that up now. <coughs> and uh, he didn't he didn't uh, have his best offensive game tonight. But on the season, he's just been, I mean, one of the most improved players in the league. He stepped it up. All the way through, right up until this point. Here we go. <clears throat> Miles Deuce McBride, coming into tonight, has averaged 18.9 points as a starter, 4.7 assists, 3.3 rebounds, right, in his 10 games as a starter prior to, to tonight. So, yeah, tonight was a bit of a, a regression, but I mean, those numbers are astounding. For a fringe rotation player last season that's just come in, gotten a contract extension, those kind of numbers are borderline all-star, right? For a 10-game stretch, 19 points a game, right? On close to five assists and uh, three boards, right? So, I mean, we got ourselves another steal. And a credit to him for the work he's put in, the coaching staff as well, right? And he's just going to go from strength to strength. Next season. On the game though, you'll get a C plus, right? <clears throat> Obviously a, a bit inefficient. Uh, loved his defense, his, his, his tenacity and all of that. But yeah, we could have done with a little bit more of that production offensively when Brunson was off the court today. And I think we would have had enough to win the ball game, right? But, but look, man, every every Nick player was a was a was a was a warrior in the second half today. They battled. I think the first half let them down, um, you know, and let let us 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 down. You know, I, I thought it was you know, inexcusable the the way we we started the game. Really, I mean, digging ourselves that much of a hole early, leaving wide open shooters. It was, yeah, it was poor. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about precious three of three. Uh, he was a minus 30 tonight. So we'll, uh, we'll give Precious's grade and look at his numbers. What did you guys see from from Achua? I mean, he's a guy who lays it all out there. But yeah, we saw the limitations today in terms of the size with, with Achua. Um, three of three is good. Um, five rebounds with two offensive w was good as well. Uh, four fouls though, six points and a minus thirty. Uh, he was he was the team worst, um, but it was fifteen minutes, and uh, my God, it was a a brutal 
15 minutes to be minus 30 in those 15 minutes. Yeah, again, um, tough assignment, you know. He's just simply too short to guard a Wemby. And, uh, but the positive is he's not going to be, you know, guarding a guy like Wemby uh, very often, right? So, but yeah, for the likes of the matchups with Paolo, Joel Embiid, I mean, we need Mitch and Isaiah to be so healthy because I like Precious, but there, yeah, there is some limitations in terms of playing him more than 15 to 20 minutes, right? <clears throat> so for today, he, he's going to get <clears throat> a, uh, a C. He'll get a C for me. I like the efficiency, three of three, and I like the rebounding in 15 minutes, but yeah, unfortunately, the, uh, the defensive side of things did not work did not work well in that matchup, right? <clears throat> but we're going to move along. We're going to talk about Bogdanovich. And we won't dwell on that too much. We'll give him his grade. And, uh, and Bogey was brutal in this game as well. 2 of 7, 0 of 3, uh, 0 from 3, minus 16, uh, 2 rebounds, 1 offensive, right? 2 turnovers, 4 points, minus 16. Um, yeah, not to dwell on it, that's not what we traded for, simply put. Bogdanovich was a 20 points per game scorer for the season when we traded for this man, right? So, but whatever, whatever's happening right now, it, it ain't working. Um, uh, he's, he's forcing it, he's, uh, he's playing rushed a bit, um, he's shaky with the ball, uh, anytime he just gets a spot up shot I'm okay with it you know catch and shoot as well you know he's, he's just as likely to knock it down as anybody else on the team but if he has to do anything else if it's read make plays you know force it to the cup he's missing layups as well you know and he's at the point where the three-point shot ain't efficient either so and, and obviously defensively is it is a is a huge liability as well so yeah I mean I'm at the point now where we just got to cut our losses, play the guys that are holding it down, and uh, and basically cut his minutes, right? So he'll get his grade for me today. That's a D, uh, fam. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, it's been inconsistent because last game was his second best game as a Nick, and then the very next game it's been some struggles as well. Some credit again to the Spurs defense as well. Um, you know, they really played with intensity, you know, and they were forcing it, you know, today in terms of forcing us off the dribble. Um, <clears throat> and also swarming for help, all of those things, etc. But look, Bogey, what I figured out, he ain't a difference maker for us. You know, we just need to focus on the, the guys that are, you know, and they'll play more minutes, right? <clears throat> And I will we'll hit on uh, Tibbs now, as uh, we had a slow start, you know, and Tibbs was really frustrated. He used up a challenge early in the ball game on what looked to be um, incorrect in the beginning because, yeah, it was, you know, a charge who, who we thought Deuce McBride drew the charge, but he was kind of moving. But uh, I, I get it was a, you know, it was a really important point of tonight's ball game so yeah unfortunately that didn't work we didn't start the game well the, the Knicks were were not ready to to win this one early in the in the ball game defensively step slow uh, losing not seeing the ball not seeing the man as well so uh, not a great night from Tibbs right M more so the squad not putting it all on Tibbs but uh, I mean we're going to be better. So I'll give Tibbs a C, right? Late game execution could have also also been better, right? <clears throat> but look, man, um, DiVincenzo has broken the franchise record and uh, Jalen Brunson saw 61 points, right? So uh, not, not the worst game of the season, not the worst loss by any means, fam. As we sit here now, I'm going to pull up the uh, the action from tonight. 
And uh, <coughs> I'm just going to refresh. So the good thing is that Orlando have lost. Obviously, we're you know we're trying to look up you know, and catch the third seed and the uh, the second seed. Uh, and the Cavs pulled out a win, but the good thing is that the Magic have lost, right? So Detroit beat the Wizards. Shout out to them. I know we, uh, wins haven't come easy, so they pick up their thirteenth win, and they might even beat the Wizards with fourteen wins on the season. But look, Orlando stay in 42 wins, 31 losses. So we have a two, a full two-game cushion on the Orlando Magic, right? But they're going to be, they're going to be there. The Pacers picked up a win as well. Uh, looks like uh, they're behind the Magic because they've got 33 losses. So that's important. You look at the losses. The the Pacers have four more losses than the New York Knicks do right now. So that's a cushion. Uh, the Dubs picked up a win. They'll move back into the 10th play-in spot out west. And then, yeah, this was the most meaningful game of the night, of course. 45 wins now for the Cleveland Cavaliers, 29 losses. So uh, one positive is, as you see again, as I said, the losses. We have the same amount of losses as the Cleveland Cavaliers. They just have one more win. So we win our next ball game. And we go level again, and we take over the fourth spot, uh, the third spot, sorry, with the tiebreaker. So that's good. And, uh, of course, the craziest result of the night goes to Miami. I don't know why they decided to win by 60. Maybe it was just the Portland Trailblazers playing their G League squad. Um, <clears throat> but the standings, right, as we look ahead now to that, and preview some of the action coming up. The New York Knicks still in fourth would be locked into a playoff series against the Magic if the playoffs came today. And as I said, half a game back of the Cleveland Cavaliers in third. So the third seed's right there for the, for the taking. And uh, we should get it as we face uh, the Thunder on, on, uh, on uh, Sunday. Miami Tuesday, and then Sacramento, Chicago, back-to-back -back, uh, to end next week. We finish in Milwaukee on Sunday, and then Chicago, Boston, Brooklyn, Chicago to end the season. So as Buzzer Beat had put on the chat before, man, six and three is that magic number. Now we can only afford three more losses, fam, to hit 50 wins and lock up at least the fourth seed. It might get us the third seed. Six more wins. I would love seven more wins, to be honest with you. I'd love us to go uh, seven and two um, over the next uh, nine. Fam, just nine games remain on the season. Not much, you know. So I do think we're going to beat Miami. The Thunder one is 50-50. But it, it is at MSG, so I could see us bouncing back. But something tells me OG ain't going to play on, on that one. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be interesting to see who takes on that SGA assignment. Uh, of course, they've got Jay Will. They've got a tough squad, you know. Shout out to, to Oklahoma, man. I mean, they're, they're second in the West, you know. They've already got 51 wins, so... You have to take that seriously, that matchup. Who's going to shut down SGA for you? Hart obviously looks to be the one. Di Vincenzo maybe get some time as well. Um, <clears throat> and look, if, if OG was a 70-80% ready, I wouldn't risk him anyway. Like As much as I really want to win these ball games, don't get me wrong, guys, but why take a chance? Because... You know, the, the playoffs is the most important thing. Right. The Knicks can finish sixth and we can still make noise. Yes, we would be you know, in a tougher spot, but we ain't, we ain't going far without good health. Uh, I mean, you know, like tonight, we lose to the San Antonio Spurs who have 17 wins. So what do you think a playoff series is going to be like against an Orlando, a Heat? You know, these teams that are going to try to chop us down and be physical. You know, so we need that. We need the guys back. 
you know, and that's what Bill Daughtry was, was focusing on last night, right? Um, you know, he brings a, you know, a level of, um, a perspective that, you know, the Knicks still can improve, you know, the Knicks can be better and the Knicks are a good team, but he also sees the flaws in terms of playoff basketball is very, very different to regular season, you know, Deuce McBride, um, Devo, Hart, so much, um, great play heroics this season that to win us regular season games the playoffs is the playoffs uh, it's going to be 16 wins to win a championship that's what we should be focusing on you know I don't I don't want to just celebrate regular season games I want to celebrate winning a championship and to do that you've got to win 16 times against a team that schemes against you tries to take away what you're good at you know, tries to bring you down onto their level if they're below you. If they're above you, they try to out-execute all of those things. So, yeah, I mean, I'm super hyped about the Knicks' future and, and we've never been in a, in a position this strong for the last 20 to 25 years, you know. Ironically, you know, since we were the, the finalists, you know, in the 94, 99 seasons. So there's, there's, there's no doubting that we are in a great position but it, it ain't all just about this season because to be honest the season's had a lot of uh, things to compromise you know the 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 heights that the Knicks could have got you know we would have been the second seed if Randall and OG were healthy um, and, and you know and the playoff series could have gone different if we do finish second um, but we we're obviously th uh, just two games out of the Bucks so that is the next thing to also look out for as well. Milwaukee play tomorrow. So let's take a peek at that. But it's important to note, once again, the New York Knicks have a two-game lead on Orlando, which is big. Uh, that, that gives us home court at the very least if we'd have finished fourth. And we do have a three-game lead on the Indiana Pacers with just nine to play. So got to take care of these games, right? Uh, Miami, I think, will be a win. I think Sacramento, Chicago, I could see us winning both because Sacramento's at MSG. Chicago is also Chicago. Milwaukee, obviously, in in Milwaukee is going to be a 50-50. Do they sit a Damian Lillard? Um, well, actually, no, that, that that won't happen because the Bucks won't the Bucks won't want to give the New York Knicks that edge. So yeah, the Bucks will. We'll have to play everyone if they're healthy because there's just two games. right? So that'll be 50-50. And then, of course, Chicago. Take away the Boston game. It's Brooklyn and Chicago again. So, yeah, I could easily see six, seven more wins, fam, and six to get us that, that third seed, fourth seed, and 50 wins on the year, fam. <clears throat> what are you guys thinking? <clears throat> we got... Laker fans in the building. Yeah, we'll see how the Lakers do. You know, the Dubs picked up a win, right? The Lakers are fighting for the play-in spot, right? All the best to them. Portland's lost two games a season by 60, man. Things are rough out there, man. Right, Malcolm Brogdon obviously ain't playing. There's so many players ain't playing. Second seed for New York, hashtag... Let's get that out there. What's your hashtag for the refs, fam? We need to, yeah, to really get at the refs for this situation. <clears throat> yeah, we got some folly in the chat as well. I'll get that out of here as well. One thing we can handle is some banter, fam, but uh, keep it clean. We've got to keep it clean. We've got Danny as a mod in the, in the chat as well. Yeah, you know, a lot of these teams acting like the chip championship's already won, but the playoffs have not begun, fam. And the New York Knicks will bring that fire, that grit, right? They'll never say die. They'll always fight. We're the most physical, gritty team in the league, right? And we can, we can, we're the kind of, we, we're the kind of underdog that can knock off a top seed, right? If there's any team that can knock off top seeds, it's, it's us because... You know, give us the Boston Celtics when we're fully healthy 
And I guarantee you the Boston Celtics wouldn't have had a challenge like us in the East all season. Um, obviously, respect to the Heat. They're a heavy hitter as well. You know, if, if you're looking at one of these teams in the play-in, outside of the play-in uh, playoff picture, you know, the Miami Heat could catch Heat and knock off a, a Milwaukee again or a Boston. Now, for the newcomers, you know, I think it's a cute story what the Magic and the Pacers have done this season, but they're not at full strength. Um, they're, they're limited as well. And the Magic, you know, have youth. They, they have inexperience, you know. Maybe it's a bridge too far to cross, you know, in, in the first round. We'll see, right? But I do think that the New York Knicks have got the depth uh, when fully healthy. And I will wait to see, man. Uh, protect OG until the final, like, three, four games max, right? I don't need to play OG in the next one. Uh, against Miami, I don't need to play him. Maybe bring him for Sacramento or uh, Chicago, one of those, if if he's good to go by then. But, yeah, again, my concern meter is at a six with that elbow and a seven or eight for Julius as well. So I think... Uh, you know, we'll wait to see how we fit, man. How the how these uh, playoff seedings, uh, f um, f basically uh, level out. You know, so we've got the Hawks and the Bulls in the play-in spot. That's going to be juicy, and then we've got Miami, and then Philly, in the seven-eight, as well. So that's, man, that's going to be very very interesting. Those, those play-in spots, man. Look, I think Miami can upset Philly. And I think Chicago can beat Atlanta. But DeJounte Murray is playing at a higher level. As, yeah, as Buzzer says, uh, Chicago is starting to figure things out. Yeah, they've got Drummond, DeRozan. They've got um, Col Colby White. He's balling out. Uh, <clears throat> Kenny Payne, back to the New York Knicks. Uh, if it does happen, it'll be next season, fam. But... You know, I haven't heard anything, so I can't, I can't say which way, but I, I won't be surprised. I think maybe 50-50 chance. Look, Kenny will always try to get another job uh, as a head coach. If he's not successful getting that, then I could see him back with the Knicks. Danny says CT bogey is washed. I think he's a liability too slow with no D. Yet father time is undefeated, man. I thought Bogey would look a little better than what he has, better than what he's shown. Uh, 20 points per game with Detroit, but yeah, he's, he's taken a while to adapt, right? I could st still see him hitting a couple big shots in the playoffs, but yeah, he, he's got a, there's got to be a real quick hook uh, with, with him, you know, as well. So, you know, we, we've got to play the guys who can, who can hold it down. On, on both sides of the floor, right? Um, so, look, it's funny as we sit here disappointed, but we're half a game still out of third, and we have that one game up our sleeve to play with the tiebreaker as well. So, basically, the third seed is ours to retake. And then two games back of the Bucks, we would have gone one and a half from the Bucks if we won today as well. But the Bucks play tomorrow. Let's peep the action, the matchups tomorrow, because it's going to be big now. Every single game this season is big. As uh, we pull it up now, Boston will play the Pels, the Magic will play the Grizz, and Atlanta will host the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's great because Atlanta are fighting for their seeding. So that's big, right? I could see Milwaukee losing that one. Guys, what do you think? Right? Uh, Atlanta's playing well. You know, DeJounte Murray breaking scoring records. He's, he's going, he's, he's getting loose. Right? Yeah, Milwaukee. Right? They're very, very vulnerable with the way they're playing. You know, it's just a damn shame we didn't pick up a few earlier wins because the second seed would be ours. You know, look how close this thing is, man. If I told you Knicks Nation 
to start the season that with nine games to play in the NBA regular season, the Knicks would be two games out of second. You would have signed up for that on the dotted line, man, but without hesitation. Probably wouldn't have even be able to finish my sentence before you would have signed up, signed off on that, man. Two games from the second seed with nine games remaining. Unfortunately, though, to add to that story is the injuries, you know, and I would not have signed up for that, but it is what it is. Um, you know, we have enough guys healthy enough to win some games, but it, yeah, it's the second round. That's, that's the, uh, the, the, the deciding factor on, on, on the next season. I feel honestly, I could see us being a first round out without OG or Randall. With uh, with one of them or both of them, then it's 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 possible Eastern Conference Finals, you know, chance to make NBA Finals with that situation. But yeah, again, I say this again, I'm hyped about the future because we have ability to in improve this squad as well. We ain't a squad with uh with no assets. We ain't struggling like you know Minnesota, LA. Uh, you know, Golden State, a lot of these franchises can't do nothing. They're fully strapped, you know. They've spent every dollar they can spend. They've made every tra uh, drafted, um, uh, traded every draft pick that they can trade. Right, Brooklyn don't even have a tra uh, draft pick this season. And they're missing out on the play-in with no draft pick as well. So, look, we're a force. We're coming. And next season we'd be favorites to make the second seed, right? It's going to be very interesting to see the odds for next season's East. Uh, forgetting how the playoffs go, obviously Milwaukee, everyone knows how weak they are now, how, how much weaknesses they've got. it would be interesting to see who has the New York Knicks ahead of the Bucks, you know, for next season as well. We've got the story about Tom Thibodeau and whether or not you know, how, 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 how often do you um, extend him and when do you do it? You know, do you wait till after another season? Right, we'll wait and see. <coughs> yeah. We've got this uh, people in the chat as well. Still there. Let me, uh, let me kick them, man. Yeah. Get out of here, you trolls. And uh, worry about your own team, man. You probably don't have any other fans or uh, or platform. But yeah, in terms of uh, yeah guests coming on, man, Buzzer Beat, I appreciate you, and uh, thanks for your questions yesterday, your contributions as well. Uh, still up in the air in terms of who's the next guest, but there will be guests coming on around the f the la the last week of the season. Uh, we'll we'll talk to B Ball Breakdown Coach Nick. We'll be talking to uh, Bill, uh, Bill Pedo, MSG Networks, as well. But yeah, nine games remaining. I, I want to wait to see, you know, how the playoff picture is looking. Uh, we have that kind of stuff to, t to talk about. And yeah, the, uh, the next guest will be on early April. Uh, I'll, keep you, I'll keep you up to date with, uh, with, with the exact uh, scheduling and, yeah, and the dates and all of that coming through. Uh, <clears throat> Michael says, if, if, if the Knicks lose first round, New York will burn. <laughs> There'll be yeah, a lot of reactions, no doubt, uh, reactions to it. It depends on how it plays out. Depends on the matchup, right? If we play a whole first round series without OG and without Randall, I think fans would, would be a little bit more civil about it. It would be upsetting, uh, but... Yeah, it depends how it goes, man. I trust Jalen Brunson enough to get us through the first round. I really do. Um, and on that note, man, guys might start to to see more um, playoff minutes right now with with just nine games left. I don't think Tom Thibodeau is going to experiment anymore. Now, tonight we saw Shake Milton. Be honest. What did you think when you saw Shake Milton in the second quarter of tonight's game right this was meaningful minutes not garbage time not because of foul trouble or injuries 
it was Shake Milton getting real minutes. Now, to me, that is Tom Thibodeau saying, okay, there's nine, minute, nine games left. Burks, you're, you're not playing right now. You're injured. Shoulder concern. Bogdanovich, okay, I can't trust you right now. Shake Milton, let's see what you can do. So, yeah, I, I kind of catch wind on what, what Tibbs is doing right now, right? He's, he knows he's running out of time to try a guy out. And so I think, yeah, Shake Milton was, was getting that burn tonight as I bring him up. Man, <clears throat> you know, Shake looked pretty sound with the ball. That, that's, that's the eye test for me. I don't just look at points. I don't look at plus minus all the time. I look at, okay, does this guy look like, you know, he's locked in defensively? Uh, does, he, does he know the plays? Does he make the right reads? And I thought, yeah, six minutes. I thought Shake Milton looked didn't didn't look out of place, you know. Uh, one of two from the field had a nice uh, late reverse layup, uh, cutting back door. Right, he picked up three defensive rebounds as well. Right, one assist and one steal, two points plus one in six minutes. So better than Bogdanovich already. Better than Alec Burks because he's unavailable right now. So yeah, uh, shout out to Tibbs actually for that. Yeah, LB so wavy agrees. Shake Milton needs to take Bogey's minutes. Yep, Michael Drake agrees. I like it. Shake Milton for real minutes. Yep. Think about it, guys. There's only nine games left, so if it's now or never. You can't just throw Shake Milton in, into a playoff rotation without playing any meaningful minutes. So look out for these next games, man. Is he getting fed up with Burke's bogey? Buzzer beater says B for shake grade. I would rather have him instead of bogey tonight. Yeah. The only issue is they play different positions, you know. There's there's size differences as well. Now, you know, I, I wouldn't mind cutting bogey's minutes completely, but I'm realistic that we might need, you know, six to eight minutes of a of a six foot eight kind of guy you know but then again he's really losing me you know with the fact that he's, he's a traffic cone on d he ain't swishing uh you know shake milton is six foot six as well so we're just gonna, maybe gonna have to live undersized um but look what shake does bring to the table which which you guys know is his ball handling He's more uh, shored with the basketball, right? He's a, he's a, he's a true point guard, you know, and a, a, a true guard who can play, make, assist, yeah, and can swish a bit, yeah, as well. So, yeah, all the best to him, man. I'm, I'm rooting for the kid as well because I was high on the deal, yeah, as well. And it was a, basically a free trade in the first place. It was a, a, uh, a free agent, you know, acquisition. Didn't have to trade for him, didn't have to do nothing. And in terms of youth... Uh, he's he's younger than the other two. He's more healthy. He's more athletic, as well. So, and look, the the bar is quite low between the two, fam. But between Burks and Bogdanovich, it's a you could argue who's been the least yeah, impressive. But for me, it's still been Alec Burks because I mean Bo Bogdanovich has had a he's had a twenty nine point game, I think, and he's had an eighteen point game. Alec Burks, it's been slim pickings for him, right? He hasn't, he hasn't even had one Alec Burks really, you know, good performance. Alec Burks game, we have not seen it at all, you know, And he's younger than Bogey as well. So, to me, he's been more disappointing. Bogdanovich, I knew was was bad defensively, but I, I didn't feel like he would take turn the ball over this much. I thought he would hit a few more shots, you know, but. It hasn't been that surprising, uh, but yeah, Alec Burks has just been complete, uh, you know, completely useless for for what we need, right? So yeah, Shake Milton, I'm I'm on board, man. I'm I'm all for it with that situation, you know. And yeah, nine games remain. Let's see, you know, we need guys healthy heading in. Some of these wins could come cheap as well. Boston, I don't think are going to play their their preferred rotation. Um, 
possibly in some of these Chicago games, it, it could be a trial, you know, them playing some G League guys as well. Uh, some of these other games against Brooklyn, you know, it could be them trialing a few dudes as well. They don't have a draft pick, you know, so they might just have to play, you know, some of their, uh, you know, their, their fringe players in, the, in those last two games as well. So, yeah, I could see the last three games of the season being consolation win, cheap wins. Um, could be the perfect games to bring OG back if he's cleared, ready. Get him some, some, play, some minutes before the playoffs as well. Uh, three of those games against Chicago. So, that's, that's interesting. As we sit, Chicago are, you know, they are four games out of eight. So that's significant. They, if they can't go any higher, you know, they, they might not care about those other games. Now, they could drop down to 10, however, as well. So that that is interesting. I'm going to be rooting for Atlanta, obviously, tomorrow, because they face the Milwaukee Bucks on that, right? And the New York Knicks can get that second seed, right? As we'll be live post-game after that game, on Sunday, Oklahoma at MSG, right? What a way to bounce back from this disappointing night, right, in terms of the result. But happy for Jalen Brunson, happy for Devo to get what they've deserved this season, right? They put in work today, and I will continue to shout them out in the future's performances, right? But thanks, guys, for rocking out, as always, man. Frustrating night for the result but it's all the way up baby from here as the New York Knicks can still finish in the second seed right and again we would have signed up for that in a heartbeat 44 wins let's get six more and get to 50 right let's bounce back against OKC I really want to beat them because you know they made a fool of us in Oklahoma earlier in the year before the OG deal after the play-in tournament and we, we owe them one, right? But tonight, we got job by the officials. 12 free throws. Disgusting, man. At the NBA officials, right? I'm going to hear the wash-up between Tibbs, JB, and whatever was said. But uh, classic, right, game from Jalen Brunson, right? 61 points. His highest as a Nick. Highest as a in his career. And one shy of the record, fam. But he's coming. He's all NBA, and he's the real MVP, as the crowd gave it to him today. Shout out, Knicks Nation. Peace. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will catch you later in the weekend. Enjoy your Saturday off. Many health, happiness, peace, blessings your way, and happy birthday to Clyde once again. Salute.